Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jian Long from the National Laboratory of Patent Recognition, Institute of Automation, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Here I will present our research, Deep Adaptive Image Clustering. In this work, we rethink the clustering problem and deal with it on a binary pairwise classification framework. Clustering is an essential data analysis tool in computer vision and data mining. Many applications, such as image search and image retrieval, can be conceived as a different instances of image clustering. In a data mining, clustering also can be utilized to find potential customers and so on. In the literature, much research has been dedicated to cluster data. Technically, they use a multi-stage pipeline and launch the features firstly, and then employs traditional clustering muscle to cluster the land, the land features. However, the land features are fixed after the phase line. Consequently, the features cannot be further improved to achieve better clustering performance. Let's rethink the clustering task. What is clustering? From definition, clustering is a task that groups similar objects into one class and groups dissimilar objects into different class. That is, clustering can be considered as a binary pairwise classification problem. For two samples, they belong to the same groups or different, different groups only. That is, we can rethink the clustering uh, as a, a binary pairwise classification. Therefore, we can now model to study similarities between pairwise samples. R is an unknown binary variable. One means that the two samples belong to the same cluster. The arrow means that they come from different cluster. And the function j is used to fit the similarities between different samples. Generally, two samples need to be addressed. First, the cluster of xi and xj are uncrowable, but only in their similarities. Second, r is unknown in the clustering process. It addresses two problems. For the first problem, we introduce label features. Label features are k-dimensional unit vectors and all the elements of the label features are positive. The number k is a predefined number of clusters. Function j is a cosine distance between two label features. And function f is a CN model that can be utilized to learn label features in our work. By introducing the label features, the DAC model can be reformed as equal five. The label feature in equal five brings an interesting theorem to cast the data. From zero one, one, we can see that the long label features are one hot vectors. And if two samples belong to the same cluster, they have the same label features. If they belong to different cluster, they have different label features. That is, we can perform clustering based on the label features only. For the second problem, we select uh, similar or dissimilar parallel samples based on the similarity between label features. Inspired by, by self-passed learning, we attempt to control the a clustering procedure, such that uh, the pairwise samples are gradually selected. Then, uh, as the pairwise samples with high likelihood are first selected to find rough patterns, then, and the clustering procedure progresses, the trained CN model can be utilized to learn more effective label features, and more pairwise samples will be gradually appended in train to find more refined patterns. So far, we have addressed the two problems. The DAC model can be reformed as this. The first team is employed to learn label features. The second team is used to select similar or dissimilar samples. But decreasing the second team, more parallel samples will be selected for training until all the samples are included. We devise a risk train line in single models to learn the label features. The optimization of W and lambda are performed automatically. Once lambda is fixed, the DAC model can be trained based on the BP algorithm. When W is fixed, we can adjust the lambda to select the pairwise samples to train DAC models. In the end, samples are clustered by locating the largest response of label features. This is the follow chart of DAC. The input is a set of unlabeled samples. Step one generates uh, the label features of uh, the samples by using a CN model. Step two calculates the cosine distance between samples based on the label features. Step three selects the parallelized training samples according to the cosine distance. Step four utilizes the selected parallelized sample to train the CN model. 
integrate step one to step four until all the parent samples are consolidated for training. In the end, samples are clustered by locating the largest response of the lab features. We perform experiments on five popular image data sets, including MINIST, CIFA 10, CIFA 100, STL 10, and ImageNet. In tab two, we report the clustering train results of different muscles. Note that DSA dramatically outperforms the other method with significant uh, margins. The clustering result of the minister test set is reported here. For clarify, we map the long label features into the two-dimensional space. The figure shows that the similar samples are gradually clustered together, and the dissimilar samples are mapped into different uh, label features. In this fig, we analyze the label features launched by DSA on MINST and STL10. We observe that the same neurons will be activated in the label features if, Im if images belong to the same cluster. That is, our muscles can learn high level features rather than the simple compilation of real features. We conduct experiment on the ImageNet dataset with different number of cluster. In summary, as the number of clusters increase, all the muscles are generally degraded. This is because more uncertainty is introduced and the number of clusters increase. However, contrary to other muscles, the superiority of our, our muscles still hold with a different number of clusters. We also test uh, the performance of the uh, clustering muscles on MINISTER and CIFA 10 with different number of uh, samples. The figure shows that the performance of most muscles improves with more samples. This indicates that more samples are beneficial for clustering. Additionally, the superiority of DSA still holds with a different number of samples. For the CIFAR 10 dataset, we observe that the performance of DSA increases rapidly when more samples are consolidated. However, DSA reaches a saturation state by using least samples on MINISTER. This is to be expected, since the sufficient samples are needed for mapping more complex images from the region features to the label features. In summary, we develop a binary pairwise classification framework for classroom analysis, which benefits the feature learning in a supersized manner. Specifically, the land label features tend to be one hot vectors. This means that the DAC can learn more effective and efficient features of data. This work also demonstrates that the consigned relationships between data points is important for clustering. In our model, the label features meet the clustering constraint. But are there any other constraints? If there are, which is the best one and why? We will explore this problem in Phil's work. Thank you for your attention. Any question? Do we have questions in Sala Grande? Interesting work. I wanted to ask uh, why on the si slide with NIST experiment, uh, the points are shaped like, like star. Do you use something like, like initial neural network or something. Huh? What? Can you speak again? Uh, you showed slide with MNIST. There were colored points. They were, it looked like, like a star, star-shaped. Uh, Why I is it, is it so? Maybe you used uh, initial neural network. Uh, this, this, the, the same mo models are used, are used to learn label features and the, the same models are trained firstly, and then we use it to generate the label features. This is the trained the same models. Do we have other questions in Sala Perla or Sala Dursena? Or Sala Grande for that matter? So one question is whether you consider using this method for 
self-supervised learning, see if this would help us pre-training a network for task like classification. Because it seems like your neurons at the end are and carry some semantic information, so this could potentially be used as pre-training a network without supervision, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so, um, as, as, I think uh, uh, in our training, uh, the step four uh, may introduce some, some noise data. This is because uh, the rounded label feature is uh, not very good. So uh, there are some noise data in, in step four for training our same model. Another question, since there is time for one more question. I, could you comment on how important it was to use curriculum learning in your clustering? What? Uh, uh, could you comment on how important it was to use curriculum learning when doing your clustering? So there, there was this. Yeah, we gradually, we gradually select the training, da training data to choose the model. This is, uh, com comes from self test learning or curriculum learning. Curriculum learning. 